Raylo is the theory that Rey and Kylo Ren will form a romantic relationship in the upcoming Star Wars movies. The theory actually began originally as a fan fiction, but as the Raylo community grew, they started to realize that it may be more than just a fan fiction after all, as more and more evidence started to pile up, pointing towards Raylo actually happening. But before we get into the mountain of evidence, I'd first like to mention that virtually all all of the evidence in this video was originally found by the girls in the Raylo community. They have worked for the past year finding all of this amazing evidence, and if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't even have this theory at all. So check out the links I've put in the description below to their original posts, because they deserve all of the credit in the world for this theory. I've also put links in the description to the artists who created all of the beautiful Raylo artwork that's in this video. Also, I'm not going to explain why Kylo Ren and Rey are not related, because it's so obvious that they aren't, which you should already know if you've seen any of my other videos. You're Han Solo's daughter. And in my head, I was like, how do you know? Like, have you seen the film? <laughs> Clearly not, because I wasn't. Rey's parents are uh, not in episode 7. So, without further ado, Let's get into the video. The day before The Force Awakens came out, Ellen DeGeneres asked the cast if there was going to be any romance in The Force Awakens, and their responses were very interesting. Any romance between uh, these characters that we will see, and if you lie to me, I'll be mad. Mm. <laughs> I think it's very subtle romance mm. that's happening. You know, you have to just look very close. You have to watch it a few times to see the little hints, but there was. So first of all, Oscar Isaac says there is a romance in The Force Awakens, but it's subtle and you may need to watch it a couple times to notice it. And John, any romance that, with your character? Yeah, see, Finn is, is, is not uh, the romantic guy right now. No? I mean, he's always sweating and panting and running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> doesn't really have time for that. John Boyega outright says that Finn does not have any romance in The Force Awakens, which is true. Finn and Rey do not form a romance at all. They are just friends. John Boyega even reinforced this during an interview with Variety, where he was asked if Finn and Rey will have a romance in The Last Jedi, and he said, I mean, we didn't establish a romance in Seven. We never played it that way. Daisy and and I we're friends. The interviewer then asked, so there's no romance? Yes, Finn and Rey, they're just friends. Finn is a stormtrooper, so he doesn't really know what's going on. So the romance thing is something that's going to be interesting in the next installment. It's not going to go the way you think it's going to go. And any uh, romance for you? Um, we shall see. Oh, so yes. Oh. So, Oscar Isaac says there is a romance in The Force Awakens, but it's very subtle and it may take a couple watches to notice it. John Boyega confirmed that Finn and Rey do not have any type of romance in Episode 7 or 8, but Daisy Ridley says there is a romance with Rey in The Force Awakens. So who else in The Force Awakens could this romance possibly be with? Kylo Ren. Adam Driver has even said that in episode 8, they will be focusing more on Kylo Ren's humanity. What's one aspect about Kylo Ren you're excited for fans to see in the next film? This is such a general answer, but, you know, hu humanity. We were forced to be general. You know, there was a lot of plot points that we knew were operating in the first one that we get to explain more in the second one that make the both of them make sense. In the commentary for The Force Awakens, J.J. Abrams says, one of the the new relationships that we were focusing on was between Kylo Ren and Rey. They've never met, but he's heard of this girl, and so now comes a moment when their meeting is inevitable, and now we're back to our heroine, and this moment where she is about to, for the first time, be confronted by Kylo Ren, a character who she's going to have a very interesting relationship with moving forward. Time Magazine even noticed that Kylo and Rey seem to have some clear sexual tension and chemistry between them in multiple scenes. The sexual energy between them is strange and unsettling, like a theremin sonata only they can hear. 
Also, I don't think that their romance was even supposed to be a secret in the first place, especially when Oscar Isaac talks about it like everyone was supposed to get it after just a couple viewings of the movie. So I think Disney is now starting to give us hints about it to help people catch on to their romance before The Last Jedi comes out. As an example, Josh Gad, who hosted Star Wars Celebration this year, even made a video with Daisy Ridley where she was asked about Rayla. Josh, you're not answering any of your Star Wars questions. No, no, Daisy, you're not. You're answering her Star Wars questions. What's the deal with Raylo? Also, pretty much the entire cast of The Force Awakens has liked Raylo fan art on social media, including Daisy Ridley, Carrie Fisher, Mark Hamill, and even Ryan Johnson, who's directing Episode 8. Even Lucasfilm itself is promoting Raylo centric fan art. In the Star Wars Celebration art show, Lucasfilm chose Raylo centric fan art to become collector's edition official Star Wars prints. They obviously aren't going to release official collector's edition prints unless they are relevant to the story. That should tell you a lot right there. Within the past month, StarWars.com has changed the bio of Kylo Ren and Rey to include information about a mysterious connection between the two. Kylo Ren's page now says, Kylo swore his loyalties were only to Snoke, but he was intrigued when he captured Rey, a Jakku scavenger whose force abilities were raw but very powerful. A mysterious connection seemed to link the two. So Kylo swore his loyalties were only to Snoke, but he was intrigued when he captured Rey. Doesn't this mean, hintity hint hint, that he will no longer be loyal to Snoke and will become loyal to Rey? The page also says, Kylo confronted the young woman who'd escaped from Jakku with BB-8 and found himself puzzled by a strange connection he felt with her. Kylo found he was no match for her power and rage. He sensed his destiny and Rey's were somehow intertwined. But how? And Rey's bio now says, she was captured by the dark side warrior Kylo Ren, with whom she shared a strange connection. So what kind of strange and mysterious connection could they be talking about? A romantic connection? Are they destined to be together? Well, Ryan Johnson may have already shed some light on what type of connection links the two. On Twitter, he recently tweeted multiple pictures of a red thread. The fact that each photo was specifically of a red thread or string was enough for the Raylo community to quickly connect the dots to the red string of fate. The red string of fate is a Chinese legend where the gods tie an invisible red thread around the ankles or fingers of two people who are destined to be together. This myth is similar to the western concept of soulmate. So perhaps this is the mysterious connection that links the two. John Williams may have also hidden clues to their connection as well, as the first three notes of Ray's theme are the exact same as the last three notes of Kylo Ren's theme. They are also the same notes that are found in Anakin and Padme's love song heard in reverse. Kylo Ren and Rey seem to also have a lot of similarities between two other Star Wars characters, Darth Revan and Bastila. First off, they look very similar to each other. Rey's theme has some similarities to Bastila's theme too. Revan started off on the light side, but turned to the dark side. After losing his memory, however, Revan came back to the light. Bastila resisted her feelings for Revan for a long time, but eventually they both fell in love. 
And best of all, just like Kylo Ren and Rey's mysterious connection, this couple had a force bond with each other. They could read each other's thoughts. Don't be afraid. I feel it too. This chapter comes straight from the YouTube channel Gwendy85, who by the way you should 100% subscribe to after this video because she's made dozens of amazing Raylo videos, one of which points out that a reoccurring voice Ray hears in the Force Awakens novel may actually be that of Kylo Ren. On page 35 of the canon junior novelization of the Force Awakens, we learn of a scene that wasn't in the movie, and as Pablo Hidalgo has has said, everything that happens in the novels, even if we don't see it on screen, are canon, so they do actually happen as part of the official story. So while Rey was sleeping in her home on Jakku right after meeting BB-8, she starts having a nightmare where she hears a strange voice. Stay here, I'll come back for you sweetheart, I promise. Yes, I'm here, I'm here, Rey shouted. As always, there was no figure to the voice, she'd been haunted by a dream or a nightmare. So who could this voice that called her sweetheart be? Well, if we compare this to page 178 of the adult The Force Awakens novel, we get a better understanding of who this might be. Turning to run in the other direction, Rey caught herself just in time as a shuttle touched down nearby. Without the slightest hesitation, the cloaked figure of Kylo Ren emerged and strode forward to join the battle. A stunned Rey could only track him with her eyes. She had seen this man before, in a daydream, in a nightmare. So using this, we can conclude that the voice in her dream was almost definitely that of Kylo Ren, as the voice was stated to haunt her as a dream or a nightmare. And when she sees Kylo Ren for the first time, it says that she knew this man from a daydream or a nightmare. To back this up further, let's jump to Rey's force vision in the novel, where she hears the voice yet again. Then behind her, another voice. That voice. Stay here. I'll come back for you. She whirled, glazed eyes desperately scanning the dark gaps between the slender trees, trying to penetrate the darkness. Where are you? She started running towards the voice. I'll come back, sweetheart. I promise. I'm here. Right here. Where are you? No response. She started forward again, running, only to be brought to a sudden halt by a figure appearing without warning from behind a tree. In the junior novel, it's even more descriptive. Someone spoke behind her, calm, kind, and eerily familiar. Stay here. I'll come back for you. She peered into the darkness between the trees. Where are you? I'll come back, sweetheart. I promise. As in her dreams, she heard no reply. She continued to dash through the forest, not giving up in her search. A man in a metal mask, cloaked in black, strode out in front of her, the hilt of a lightsaber in his hand. Pablo Hidalgo has even confirmed on Twitter that this voice was a man's voice. So this voice couldn't be from, like, her mother when she was dropped off in Jakku or something. And it couldn't be from her father either, as in the book, Ray's story, it says that Ray has no memory of her parents. Yet this voice was eerily familiar to her. And the voice couldn't be Finn or Han Solo either, as she already knew both of them before having her Force vision. So she would have instantly recognized either of their voices. So with all this, it's pretty clear that the voice is that of Kylo Ren. And since J.J. Abrams said in the Force Awakens commentary that Rey and Kylo Ren have never met before, this means that Kylo Ren is going to call Rey sweet heart at some point in the future. And the use of the word sweetheart works perfectly too as Han Solo called Leia sweetheart in the original trilogy. You have a plan for getting out? He's the brakes, sweetheart. I want to be around when I made a mistake. This could be a sweetheart. This baby's got a few surprises left in her sweetheart. Sweetheart, we're taking off. Sorry, sweetheart. 
So Ben could have picked this up from his father as a child. Also, the fact that he's saying, wait here, I'll come back for you, seems like he's about to go do something very dangerous, like perhaps confront Snoke or something. And this could be the moment where Kylo Ren and Rey have their first kiss, a goodbye kiss as there is a chance they may never see each other again. Especially since in every trilogy so far, there has been a romantic kiss in the second movie. So we'll have to wait and see if this is indeed the first time that they kiss. Snoke also says in the novel that Kylo Ren has compassion for Rey. You have compassion for her. I perceive the problem. It isn't her strength that is making you fail. It's your weakness. Could this compassion Kylo Ren feels for Rey really just be platonic? Well, in Attack of the Clones, the definition of compassion seems to mean something a little more intimate. Compassion, which I would define as unconditional love, is central to a Jedi's life. Maz Kanata may have also given us a few hints in The Force Awakens that Rey and Kylo Ren are destined to be together. When Maz says, Whomever you're waiting for on Jakku, they're never coming back. But there's someone who still could. Maz actually doesn't say that Rey is right. Maz doesn't even reply at all to Rey guessing Luke. She just quickly moves on to saying that Rey's belonging is not behind her, it is ahead. Look, the belonging you seek is not behind you, it is ahead. So perhaps she was referring to someone else coming back, like Ben coming back from the dark side. And the belonging that Rey is seeking will come from Ben in her future. And what happens next is absolutely crazy. If you listen closely, you can actually hear that Rey hears a voice say something to her right after this. The saber. Take it. <laughs> It's hard to make out what the voice says, but to me it sounds like it's Ben. <laughs> and Ray gets startled by this voice and stands up and even looks to her right, but in the next shot she's looking forward. So they actually cut out a scene right here. Maybe Ray was supposed to see another vision of Ben in this scene, but I do think that this voice is the force telling Ray that it's not Luke who can still come back. It's Ben. It's Ben who Rey will feel a belonging with ahead of her. And in the novel, when Rey runs away into the forest and is confronted by Ben for the first time, Finn asks Maz, where's Rey? And Maz replies, Rey is where she needs to be, i.e. with Ben. So why would they fall in love in the first place? Isn't Kylo Ren supposed to be an irredeemable villain that we're all supposed to hate and cheer on when Rey finally kills him for killing Han Solo? Well, first of all, what kind of message does that give people? That we should fight hate with even more hate? The entire point of the original trilogy was that Luke refused to kill Darth Vader, even though Darth Vader killed Obi-Wan Kenobi, betrayed May Windu and even killed children, Luke still didn't kill him because he could sense that there's still good in him. So Luke brought him back from the dark side to the light. Even Padme forgave Anakin for killing her and said there's still good in him. There's good in him. I know. I know. still light in him, I know it. 
Star Wars is not intended to breed hatred, contempt, and lust for murderous revenge. It's about forgiveness, understanding that good people can go down a dark path, and the internal conflict between good and evil inside all of us. Rey is going to be the key factor in Ben Solo's redemption arc, just like Luke was for Anakin. In fact, if Rey wanted to just murder Kylo Ren outright, she would have done it already. In the junior novel, it even says she had a chance to kill him, yet did not. Did the girl think she was actually stronger than him? Or worse, did she pity him? The script says she could kill him right now with one vicious strike, but she stops, realizing she stands on a greater edge than even the cliff the edge of the dark side. So Rey has already had the chance to kill Kylo and chose not to. Rey knows there is still good in Ben. And in The Last Jedi, we will learn more about the real reason Kylo Ren is on the dark side in the first place, Snoke. Snoke has been controlling, manipulating, and corrupting Ben's mind since he was a child. No, it was Snoke. He seduced our son to the dark side, but we can still save him. Remember that Snoke is possibly the most powerful dark side character in Star Wars history, and Kylo has been tortured by Snoke's manipulation his whole life. In fact, during Rey's Force Vision, she was originally supposed to see Ben Solo as a child with Snoke looming over him at the end of the hallway. But they cut it from the final version of The Force Awakens so they can focus more on it in the next movies. And believe it or not, but Kylo Ren and Rey are actually perfect for each other too. They mirror each other much more than you might expect. When we first see Kylo Ren, he emerges from the bright lights of his ship into the darkness of outside. When we're introduced to Rey, it's the exact opposite. She emerges from the darkness of a ship into the bright light of outside. They both have anger issues too. Kylo Ren's is more apparent, but Rey also gives into her anger multiple times. In the novel, it says, she was also angry. She drew her power from the same well as Ren, her rage. They are also both seeking belonging, especially from their parents. Kylo Ren's parents were never around. Leia was a general always working, and Han was out smuggling and stealing instead of spending time with Ben. They even sent him away as a child to Luke's academy where he would never see his parents. I just never should have sent him away, that's when I lost him. He felt isolated and abandoned. And Rey, she was also abandoned by her family. Her family left her there to die, all alone. Why would her family abandon her like this? So Kylo Ren and Rey aren't so different after all. They both just want to feel accepted and are seeking a belonging. And they will find that belonging in each other. They will understand each other's pain and suffering. And ultimately, Rey will be the catalyst to Kylo Ren's redemption arc. Just like Anakin's love for Padme, was ultimately what turned him to the dark side, Kylo's love for Rey will be what ultimately brings him back to the light. What girl? It's the motivator. Rey is Kylo Ren's motivator his motivation to return to the light. Kevin Jenkins, the supervising art director that worked on The Force Awakens, said that the light shining down on Kylo Ren on the catwalk was meant to be symbolic of the Force. And where is this ray of light emitting from? Ray. Ray's light is shining onto Kylo Ren while he contemplates coming back to the light. And when Ray's light fades for a moment, he turns back to the dark side. More evidence that Ray is the one that will turn Kylo back to the light. Also, some people still seem to think that the entire point of this scene was to show how evil and merciless Kylo Ren is, when in fact it's actually the exact opposite. I mean, just look at this. Does this really look like the face of a man who shows no remorse? 
Of course not. In fact, J.J. Abrams said in the commentary that Kylo Ren was actually being convinced to leave the First Order and return to the light here. People have asked me if I think that Kylo Ren was just playing with him the whole time, if he meant to kill him from the beginning. And the truth is, I think that Kylo Ren in this moment is actually being uh, convinced to walk away from this. So he wasn't just faking it to kill Han Solo or anything, he genuinely was being torn apart by his emotions. But ultimately he fell for Snoke's manipulation that convinced him to kill Han Solo. Han Solo. But it clearly backfired as Kylo Ren instantly regrets his decision. In fact, in the adult novelization it says, Stunned by his own action, Kylo Ren fell to his knees. Following through on the act ought to have made him stronger, a part of him believed. Instead, he found himself weakened. And in the script, it says, Kylo Ren is somehow weakened by this wicked act. Himself horrified. His shock is broken only when Chewie cries out in agony. So clearly, Kylo Ren regrets his decision, and even Han Solo forgave him. In the junior novelization, it says, Han forgave his son for what he had done. He prayed someday his son would forgive him in turn. In the first issue of the Star Wars The Force Awakens Marvel comic, if you look closely, you'll notice that Kylo Ren's mask is actually breaking apart and light is shining through from within. The light is shining directly onto Rey as well, symbolizing that Rey will be the one who brings out the light in Kylo. In the 2017 Star Wars Celebration poster, we see a pattern of Star Wars couples being positioned diagonally to each other. Not to mention the Force Awakens poster where Kylo and Rey are mysteriously placed right beside each other, their weapons paralleling each other, and a light shining right in between their hearts. And if you look at it symbolically, Rey grew up as a scavenger who found rusted, damaged pieces of metal, found what was good in them, and fixed them. Now does anyone know of a damaged piece of metal? in need of somebody finding the good in him? If you haven't noticed already, Kylo Ren is very interested in Rey. First of all, he mysteriously already knows of Rey before even meeting her, so he's probably had dreams and visions of her and her voice, just like Rey had dreams and visions of him and his voice. When he first meets Rey, he eyes her up and down, literally checking her out, and instead of extracting the map from her mind, he decides to to take her back to his lair. And how does he do it? He literally sweeps her off her feet and carries her in his arms like a bride. This is not normal behavior. In fact, the setup to Poe Dameron's interrogation and Ray's interrogation are exactly the same. And movies only show us the exact same scene twice in order to illustrate the differences between them. So first, Poe. He was aggressively taken into custody by stormtroopers. Rey, on the other hand, is blissfully picked up into Kylo Ren's own arms as he gently bridal carries her back to his ship. I can't stress how important this scene is. Kylo clearly could have ordered his stormtroopers to drag her into custody, but instead carries her in his arms, like a bride. J.J. Abrams even says in the commentary, So the idea here is that Kylo Ren's gotten inside of Rey's mind, sees she has the map, and is now letting go of the droid as his goal and focusing on her. And clearly, you think, he must be able to extract the information he wants now, but because he's taken in her, you get a sense that there might be something else going on here. And during the scene, John Williams made the conscious decision to awkwardly shove a Star Wars-esque rendition of Romeo and Juliet's famous love song, just as Kylo Ren carries Rey to his ship.
When Poe wakes up, the interrogation room is dark, and we notice that he's been beaten severely. There's blood all over his face, and Kylo Ren is towering over him. When Rey wakes up, the room is brightly lit. She doesn't have a mark on her. No blood, nothing. And Kylo Ren is kneeling at her feet, watching her sleep. When Rey asks where she is, Kylo says, you're my guest. Where am I? You're my guest. And in the novel, it explains that in Kylo Ren's voice, there was unexpected gentleness. When Kylo Ren probes Poe Dameron's mind, he slams his head back into the metal platform and almost kills him using the force as Poe is screaming in pain. And we're back to Rey. In the novel, Kylo Ren even removes Rey's restraints. A couple clicks and her restraints fell away from her arms. When Rey asks where her friends are, in the novel, Kylo says, I would prefer to be honest with you from the beginning. You'll be relieved to hear I have no idea. Then, when Rey shows that she feels uncomfortable because of Kylo Ren's mask, he removes his helmet for her to make her feel more comfortable. And guess what Rey does next? She eyes him up and down, checking him out, just like Kylo Ren checked her out on Takadana. Rey even steals another glance. And can you blame her? Kylo Ren is freaking gorgeous in this scene. His flowing hair, his luscious lips, he's even puckering slightly. He's supposed to look attractive in this scene. That's why they put so much work into making him look so attractive. In the novel, they even describe Kylo Ren's face as sensitive. The novel then reveals even more uncharacteristic acts of kindness from Kylo. Is it true? He finally asked. You're just a scavenger? She didn't respond, and perhaps sensing her embarrassment, he changed the subject. Tell me about the droid. So Kylo Ren sensed that Rey was embarrassed, and then he changed the subject for her. He probably would have did the same for Poe. <sighs> when Rey refuses to tell Kylo Ren about the map, in the novel he says, I would have preferred to avoid this. Despite what you may believe, it gives me no pleasure. I will go as easily as possible, but I will take what I need. Another thing that was very interesting was Kylo Ren says, don't be afraid, I feel it too. Which is very interesting, especially because we've heard something similar to this before. What are you afraid of? Afraid? You're trembling. Don't be afraid. I'm not afraid to die. Don't be afraid. I feel it too. I'm not giving you anything. We'll see. In the novel, Kylo Ren even caresses Rey's face. He touched her again, as he did in the forest on Takadana. In the script, it says, Kylo Ren nearly touches her face. They're both surprised. They react to a feeling that passes between them, an energy they recognize in each other. And what does Kylo Ren search for in Rey's mind exactly? Isn't he supposed to be looking for some kind of map to Luke Skywalker? Well, he seems to be spending an awful lot of time learning about Rey's feelings, how she feels lonely, and her memories instead. Yeah, so lonely. So afraid to leave. Meanwhile, he's basically breathing onto her neck. Just look at these facial expressions, too. He even has a slight smile for a split second. The only time he smiles in the entire movie was with Rey. And when Rey gets the upper hand and starts probing Kylo Ren's mind, in the novel we get even more wordplay hinting towards Rey's feelings towards Kylo Ren. She felt herself inexorably drawn to, to you, she said. You're afraid that you will never be as strong as Darth Vader. So, she felt herself inexorably drawn to you, i.e. Kylo Ren. 
later on, we start to get the sense that Kylo is a little possessive of Rey as well, and he doesn't want anyone else taking Rey's attention away from him. Just look at how upset he gets when Rey leaves him. After he kills Han Solo, who by the way was also taking up Rey's attention, and is hit by Chewbacca's bowcaster, who does he look up to and glare at? Instead of the Wookiee who just shot him, he makes eye contact with the other man in Rey's life, Finn. The love triangle couldn't be more obvious. Just look at the way Kylo Ren looks at Finn. He's pissed, and Finn knows it. Finn knows that Kylo is coming after him. They are essentially competing for Rey, at least in Kylo Ren's mind they are. Of course, in reality, Finn and Rey are just friends, but that doesn't matter. Kylo doesn't know that, and all he sees is that Finn is standing between him and Rey. When Finn goes over to Rey and starts holding her, Finn is then literally standing between Kylo and Rey. And when Finn starts putting his hands on Rey, that's the last straw, and this is where the instinctual bar fight over a girl begins. Kylo could have killed Finn at any moment, but he chooses to show his dominance over him instead, basically showing that he is the alpha dog. Kylo even punches Finn in the face. The only way this could have been more of a bar fight is if they threw down their lightsabers and said, let's finish this like men and duked it out. Why don't you try fighting like a man without your Jedi tricks? Oh, it would be my pleasure. I thought you said he didn't have feelings for you. The novel also reveals that when Kylo Ren and Rey fight, which by the way was started by Rey, not Kylo Ren, Kylo Ren could have easily killed her, but he doesn't. Ren held his lightsaber posed to strike. I could kill you right now, but there is another way. Kylo easily could have just force pushed her off the cliff here too, especially when she had her eyes closed, but again, he's not going to kill his love interest. Not to mention the clear sexual subtext here too. The heavy breathing. Kylo Ren is staring deep into her eyes. They use close-up choker shots here too, which are almost exclusively used in movies to create romance. In an interview, Daisy Ridley even accidentally gave away a spoiler about this scene too. And especially that moment with me and Adam when we were just doing that moment when we're... Yeah, like, I'm finding the force, yeah, ever. I shouldn't say that. <laughs> or whatever. In that moment when we're finding the force, yeah, ever. I shouldn't say that. Finding the force, yeah, ever. I shouldn't say that. So in this very intimate scene, they were apparently finding the force together. The Star Wars Lego video game is even less subtle. Keep striking at me. Surrender to it. Yes. Yes. That's it! Something else I found interesting is Kylo Ren and Rey's names also have some strange similarities. As some of you may know, Rey is probably not her real name, as the helmet she puts on in The Force Awakens actually has the name Rey printed on the side of it. That helmet belonged to a separate character named Dosmet Rey, who was a starfighter pilot that was presumed to have crashed on Jakku a long time ago. So Rey started using this as her name as she used to play Play with that helmet a lot growing up, but her real name is yet to be revealed. Well, before The Force Awakens was released, a lot of early script leaks, concept art, etc. actually stated that Rey's character's name was Kira. And if you put the two names together, Kira Rey, it sounds an awful lot like Kylo Ren. Kira Rey, Kylo Ren, Kira and Kylo have four letters and start with a K. Ray and Ren have three letters and start with an R. But if that's not enough symbolism to convince you, maybe this will. For Valentine's Day, StarWars.com posted a cartoon of Kylo Ren cutting the shape of a heart with the caption, I'm mad for you. Who is Kylo Ren mad for exactly? Maybe we should follow the hearts to find out.
Throughout The Force Awakens, there seems to be hidden hearts scattered throughout the entire movie, especially when Kylo Ren and Rey are in scenes together. One of the most obvious heart shapes is displayed right in between Kylo and Rey when they first meet on Takadana. Once you see it, it's difficult to unsee. What's more is when Han Solo and Leia meet later on, their scene is set up exactly the same. Han and Kylo are on the right, Leia and Rey are on the left, and there's the shape of a heart in a tree in the background between them. As pointed out by Star Wars Connection on YouTube, the heart between Han and Leia is split in half too, with a line right down the middle which could represent the state of Han and Leia's broken relationship. When Kylo Ren is interrogating Rey, there's also the shape of hearts in Kylo Ren's eyes, symbolizing his interest in Rey. Look Look at those little hearts, it couldn't be any clearer. Hard eyes, motherfucker. Here are even more hearts scattered throughout the movie. There are too many here for me to talk about each one, so I'll skip to the biggest one of them all. The obvious heart that forms around Kylo Ren on the cliff edge. I mean, is this one even debatable? Look at how unnatural of a shape that is. It's clearly a heart. They could have shaped the cliff mostly straight, but no. It's in the very unnatural shape of a heart. Even the dark tree line and plants behind Kylo form the bottom of the heart. And in the next shot of Rey, there's even a heart on her side too. Very subtle romance mm. that's happening. You know, you have to just look very close. You have to watch it a few times to see the little hints. Hey, thanks for watching part one of my Raylo Theory video series. I had to split this into two videos just because it'd be well over an hour long if it was in one video. But part two is actually probably even more interesting than part one. So definitely check out part two. You can click the link right here to start watching that video right now. If the link isn't up yet, that just means I'm still working on the video. It should be up in the next couple days. So you should subscribe and turn on notifications so you get notified right when I upload the new video. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. They are the focus of evil in the modern world.